What's going on guys? Stefan here, SNE's Garage. Today we got a boat we're gonna be looking at. This is my 1976 Roballo center console, 20 foot, with a 1993 Johnson Evinrude uh, 150 V6 two-stroke engine. I'm um, just getting it out of you know out of the backyard, getting ready to clean it up, put it in the water. And we're just going to go over this motor, make sure everything's good. Uh, one thing I am noticing here is that there is a ton of two-stroke oil all over the uh, the lower unit, which means I probably have a fuel leak somewhere in here. Um, so we're going to get this air cleaner off. Here's the air cleaner, all right, on the front. Your six carburetors are here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to take these elastic straps off here, one, two. So those two are off. We're going to do the same thing here, three and four, and we're just going to pull our air cleaner off from the top and lift it up and out of the way. So that's out of the way, and now we're going to take our, uh, we're going to move the motor over a little bit. We're going to take our bowl here, our bulb, we're going to pressurize the fuel system, and we're going to see what we got. And just like that, you can see right here at the vapor separator that we have a uh, rather large fuel leak, as I suspected. Now, I replaced that gasket last year, maybe two years ago. So I'm hoping that maybe the gasket just went bad, but I'm, I'm willing to bet that that cap is probably warped. So we're going to start pulling this apart. I know there's four screws that hold it in, but we got to get some of these hoses out of the way. Each one of these hoses go to the fuel rail, so here's one hose here, it goes to this fuel rail, feeds three, these three carbs, and then this one does the same thing. You got the hose right here, you follow it, it goes to this fuel rail, feeds those three carbs. So I may very well have a leak on these carburetors too, but we need to address the you know the obvious one first before we take it any further so let's work on getting this thing apart and uh, see what we got all right guys so we're on board the boat now and we need to get this line off this line off this line off and then it looks like there's one behind it I need to get off too to be able to access these four screws now, like I said, I'm thinking I'm going to have a little bit more of an issue here because I did just replace this gasket last year and it is leaking again. So let's hope for the best here. Um, I'm hoping maybe the gasket just went bad. But if this plastic piece is warped, I'm going to have a little bit of a problem because it is discontinued. This engine is a 1993, so it is almost as old as I am. So let's start taking it apart. We're going to inspect this, we're going to see if it's warped, and if it's warped, uh, we're just going to put it back together and come up with another solution. So let's work on getting these off. Oh yeah, she's pressurized. <laughs> Squirting fuel at me. I realize these are not the right tools. I have all of my tools at work this weekend because I was not expecting to be working on a boat. But when you got a fuel leak and you want to get the boat in by the end of the month, uh, you kind of just drop what you're doing and start working so we got those two lines off this one's held in with a spring clip so we're going to pull the spring clip back this is probably a vent line yeah we're going to pull that off and then we have a vent line up here that we also need to remove all right so now i can access one two three fourth screw is buried so let's get this thing let's get these screws and start taking her apart all right guys so what we're gonna do to get to this thing is there's four screws here one two three four that hold this whole vapor canister in so we're going to loosen and take these screws out 
and it's going to give us access to all four of the top screws on the unit. So we're going to pull these out. Here's one. There's number two. Here's number three. Get these washers off too so they don't disappear on me. And here's number four down here. Point this down a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Number four is down there. So with those removed, this whole vapor canister should move, which it does. So we're just going to pull it over this way. And these top screws here, one, two, three, four, we're going to go ahead and remove them. We're going to try to loosen them uniformly so that we do not warp or break the plastic any more than it probably already is. So let's just pull these screws out. One, two, three, and four. So now this cap will separate and this gasket does not look like it's bad. I'm thinking we have an issue with our seal here. I'm thinking this might be warped. But we're going to pull it out and check it with a straight edge. So let's, let's pull it all the rest of the way out and uh, get it in the garage. to put this new gasket into place like so okay now we're going to take some RTV surface here. I don't want to use a whole lot. Just enough. was leaking from this corner more so than anywhere else so I am going to try to make sure I get it in that spot now I do not want to get any RTV in the center 
of this thing here because it, I think it's important. So I'm just going to use an old zip tie, clean that out. Now we're going to put our cover back on in place like so and I'm going to screw that back in. Remember this is plastic so you don't want to kill it. And then we're going to let this cure for a couple hours before we even try to fill it up with fuel. So we're just going to get all our bolts started. We're going to stop them up. Snug. Snug. And the same thing, we're just going to snug these. Alright, so they're tight. We're going to slide this whole thing back in and put it back together. Slide this hose back on. Clamp it back up. Alright. We're going to slide this back into its spot. And we're going to take our screws and washers. And we're just going to snug them up. Snug. And we're just going to do that for the rest of these four screws also. So we got our fuel lines back on going to each side of the engine. We just have to zip tie these on because that's the way they were secured originally. So. We're just going to get these zip ties in. That's where they need to go. Perfect. Ordinarily, I wouldn't use zip ties, but it's all I got right now. So. I'm sure it'll work. Alright. So now we play a waiting game. We're going to let this marinate and, uh, you know, cure. And then we're going to pump it up. See if it leaks. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If for some reason this doesn't fix it, I will have to find a new housing and a new cap. And both parts are discontinued, so that will be a rather interesting search. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.